abrupt change in the leadership of the church. People's emotions just cannot shift on the fly like it is necessary for them to do when a beloved longtime pastor is there one minute and gone the next. This transition is just as traumatic and maybe more so when the longtime leader dies in office having made no preparations for transition. It might be easier on the ego and the feelings of the old guy, but it is devastating on the church. I have seen many great churches in our movement die because there were no provisions made for transition. My son David is now the senior pastor. You know how long ago we started that process? 19... 1990 actually he became youth pastor first he was youth pastor for several years in 1998 he was made co-pastor co-pastor of Antioch and pastor of our Sunday morning congregation that met in our main location and then in 19 in, in 2005 he was made senior pastor. I was no longer pastor of any kind. He was still pastor of the main congregation that met in our main location. And he was also senior pastor of the entire body. And the first of this year, Joel became pastor of our main congregation that met on Sunday morning in our main location. And David became senior pastor of all of Antioch. And he tra tra travels around to all of our congregations. And we're still in transition. People's emotions are still in transition. We've changed the structure, but people's emotions are still in transition. Because my wife and I are still, in a lot of people's hearts, the pastor. You can't make people turn it on and off their emotions. You can change the structure, but transition is not complete until the emotions change. And of course a lot of people can't shift their emotions. Because it feels like to them they're being disloyal to the former pastor. But it is not disloyalty to accept and honor new leadership. It's God's plan. I must have taught the church pretty well. Because they're already honoring and participating with David like they never did for me. Seriously. They do stuff for him they never did for me. Now my flesh can say, I don't like that. You didn't do that for me. Or I can say, they are accepting the transition. They are participating. And they're, they're learning they need to treat him differently than they treated me. But I dealt with them when they were babies, and most of them are mature saints now, especially leadership. They're mature. Okay? Number two, why do older men rarely ever truly prepare a body for them to one day no longer be the man? The answer, how does a man of God retire from the ministry? How does one retire from a call? Isn't experience and wisdom worth anything to the body? Isn't there a place for the... For, for the older minister who may not have the strength to do the day-to-day -day work and to fight the day-to-day -day battles, but through time and walking with God, ego is virtually gone, desire for recognition and accolades has significantly faded, and position has become only an opportunity to glorify God instead of a needed self-esteem boost. Is it the faith, steadiness, honed perception, an acquired knowledge and increased wisdom of the older man of God of any value to a local church and the present spiritual leader? Wouldn't a covering of authority be, be a benefit to the leader who is leading the troops in battle? Wouldn't an old warrior be a benefit to the new commander of the troops? Can a team really win without a coach on the sidelines and only a, 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 a we, quarter, this is American football, a quarterback on the field? Are not strategizing and play calling different roles? A coach strategizes. The players on the team decide 
what they're going to do at, at the moment it's necessary. Now, I played what we call soccer, you call football, in college. But it wasn't nearly as sophisticated as soccer or football at the highest levels. You have plays. Because I'm not really familiar, I don't recognize when a team see, has a ball in a certain position and guys suddenly move to a different place and know they don't even have to look. They can kick this direction because they know a guy will be there because that's the play for that situation. Right? Am I right? There isn't time for the coach on the sideline to say, play 42, whatever, however you would recognize it. But the guys on the field know. The coach isn't on the field. He's the coach. He decides who's in the game. The bishop is the coach. The senior pastor is leading the troops on the field. Or I'll go this way. Moses was on the mountaintop with his hands raised. Joshua was in the valley leading the troops fighting the battle. Both jobs are necessary. How hard was Moses working? Well, he had so little strength that he couldn't even stand up. And every time he got weak and his arms came down, the battle turned against Israel. With his arms up, the battle went for Israel. It got so bad that they brought a rock over for him to sit on, and then two people just physically held his arms up so Israel could win the battle. He didn't have a sword in his hand. He didn't kill one person. But he was an important part of the battle. But you know what? Moses couldn't have won that victory without Joshua. There had to be a young man strong enough to be down on the field, in the battle, leading the troops, to take advantage of the blessing that God was pouring out because of the covering of authority that was coming from Moses. God set that up here in Singapore. And while Brother Willoughby is certainly not old at this point in time, he is weak enough he sits in that chair, and if you want his hands raised, somebody's going to have to hold him up for him. That's why I believe he's not going to die. I believe that. I believe it. He may pass today, but I don't believe he is. Because for Singapore to become what it's supposed to be, he can't be replaced. He may not even be able to come to church every weekend. And when he gets well, he, he may not even be here very much. But he's the covering. He'll be where the buck stops. He won't be the general in the battle leading the troops. And that's why I said the other day that some folks won't be able to accept it. Because he'll be here so little, it'll be just as if he passed away. Because he has a ministry to the world, especially to Asia. I am the bishop of Antioch, the apostolic church. And I can be the bishop from here. Because if there's a problem that comes up that only the bishop can settle, I have email, I have text messages, I have a telephone. And all they need is my word. Because you know how you exercise authority? You don't exercise authority with force. The centurion said, Jesus said, I'll go to your house. The centurion said, no, no, no. I am a man under authority. He didn't say I'm a man that has authority. He told us how he had authority. I'm a man under authority. And I say to this one, go, and he goes. And I say to this one, come, and he comes. I can be the bishop and exercise my authority from Singapore simply by a word. Yes, no. And you know something? When I get home, I will expect my yes to have been yes. And if they don't do it, like I said it should be done, they better hope they have some really good reasons. 
they better be able to 